All right, another very requested tutorial or flip analysis, um, swing cast. I guess we're keeping with the theme of casts. Um, a, a lot of what I say in this one will sound very similar to cast scanner because again, there's two very important parts of swing cast. One is the cast motion. Um, and because we're on bars, it's actually the, the tap motion as well. Learning how to tap, and how to use shape changes to create momentum. Go back and look at the video I did on flyaways if you're not familiar with the concept of tapping or using shape changes to create momentum on bars. But swing cast is basically just that. It's the use of shape changes to create momentum on bars. And then there's a little bit of throwing the bar down with your arms. Um, but uh, unless you understand the shape change and the momentum stuff, throwing down with your arms isn't going to do much. Uh, it really, and obviously... Uh, People can get away with bad swing cast tech if they just throw really hard, but they'll reach a point where they can't get any better at it, or they'll start to struggle with variations like swing cast full and swing cast lay if their technique on the shape change is not good. So we're watching Riker, who I talked about last time uh, with the cast gainer and how he's really good at bars. So I figured I'd use a clip of him uh, because he's really good at bars. But this is a swing cast layout. Um, and... The reason I'm using a swing cast layout to talk about swing cast is because the set is exactly the same and it also has some interesting things that we can notice physics wise about flips that I want to talk about. But first let's watch it. Incredibly good. So first thing I want you to notice is his tap. So in order to make swing cast work, you need to be doing two things on the backswing. You need to be rising upward and you need to be creating rotation of your hips under you or creating rotation of your chest over you. Now, for a few reasons, you want to be creating rotation from your hips under you just because it will create a faster rotation. And in this case, in the shape that your body is in, it's much more efficient to get your hips to go under you than to try to get your chest to go over you because getting your chest to go over you requires more height, which is going to make it longer before you actually start flipping versus getting your hips to go under you gets you to start flipping a little bit quicker and without having to go as high or without taking away from your height. So you have to be doing those two things. You have to be going up and you have to be creating that shape change. So the up is taken care of by the first part of this tap. So there's two parts to this tap, actually three. This first part, this pike here, is basically you can imagine it as when you straighten out in the front of the bar, you're, you're like a sail and you're capturing wind, right? You wanna be as big as possible to capture as much wind as you can, right? Once you've captured that momentum, you're then going to shorten yourself into this pike shape, right? And shortening yourself is gonna allow you to go faster with that momentum. So if you're in a big shape and then you go to a small shape, you're gonna speed up a little bit, right? So he's gonna speed up here and then he's going to let that momentum carry through and he's gonna pause for a moment, letting the momentum switch from the pike to the arch. So notice his chest barely moved in that, All right? Let's watch that one more time. So watch as he lets the momentum transfer. So right now he's he straightened out his body and then he's piking. He could have held the straight longer and he would have gotten more momentum, but it's all right. Um, he straightened out his body and then piked. So now he's putting that momentum into his hips, right? And then what he's gonna do is watch as the momentum transfers from his hips to his feet, his torso is barely gonna move. So look, his torso almost like freezes as his heels go through because he's transferring that momentum to his feet. Now, what this does is now his feet have the momentum. So his heel drive is gonna lift him up. That creates the height he's looking for, right? So he's building that momentum into the backswing and those heels driving are gonna drive him up. They're also gonna drive him into this arch shape, which is important because the next thing we need to do is create rotation of the hips under. So he's rising up. And now this is where the cast motion comes in. And what you'll notice is that the cast is really just a shape change to create momentum of your hips rotating under you. So he's in this arch position. Now he kicks his legs straight out, right? So he kicks his legs straight out here. So he's from this arch, he's gonna kick it straight. He's gonna pass through this straight line position right here. And that's really good. I mean, that's gonna give you a ton of momentum. Um, even though he's only there for a brief second, that is exactly what you want. Cause just like the sail that we talked about, he's creating this really, really, really big shape with a lot of speed and then he's gonna make it smaller to make you get even more speed. Or if he was doing a regular swing cast, he would make it smaller. But because he's doing a swing cast layout, he really needs this good shape change. And then you'll notice his hips start to come under and I'm gonna go back just a tiny bit because we wanna really see that change of momentum. So we get the pike, the heel drive lift, the kick. And right there, you'll start to notice he throws the bar down, 
right? He pulls it down, but you'll notice he doesn't pull it all that much. The more you pull, the closer you're gonna get to the bar. You have to be able to apply a lot of force downward without actually pulling the bar into you. So it's like, you're doing this, but not this, because that's gonna pull you toward the bar, right? And then his hips are gonna start to rotate under him. Now, I want you to watch this, because this is really interesting. I talked about with the cast gainer, only one part of your body can be pulling you at a time. Only one part can really have the momentum. Well, I want you to watch during this layout. If you look closely, you can see the momentum switch from his hips to his chest to his hips, to, like in that order. So I just want you to watch and notice that. So watch that one more time. Ready? Hips, chest, hips. It's really interesting to watch because... So right now his hips are rotating under, then he switches it to his chest, his chest is coming over, and then right about here, once he sees the ground, he changes it again to his hips and you'll see his chest almost stays still until his hips catch up. But what's really important to understand is that what makes a swing cast work is everything that happens before you leave the bar. Once you're off the bar, I mean, that's, that's the end of it. All you can do is basically, your only options are to tuck, right? So if you have no momentum, tucking is not gonna do anything, right? Um, so what you really need to do, and again, just like cast gainer. I highly recommend you learn this over a foam pit because it lets you practice the set, right? And then just trust it and tuck. So the, the way I would go about learning this is just practice this swing. So just practice the pike, arch, kick, but don't let go of the bar. Just round yourself. So go pike, arch, round yourself and try to feel. Remember we talked about in the cast gainer, the, the back angle, right? Where your back is going. Feel that your back is going mostly up. So right here, at this moment, you want right as you switch to this from this straight position to the to the rounded position, you want your back to be going straight up or almost or slightly away from the bar, but not toward the bar. Right? That's what you want to work on. When you can get a swing where you can properly feel that and feel that lift, right? Then what you do is you do that exact same thing, but right where you feel your back lifting, you let go. That's when you let go of a swing cast, is right as your back is lifting, right? So you're gonna start by doing that, feel your back lifting, let go, and just try to rotate to your back in the foam pit. You can also do this on a soft mat, if you're like over a soft mat, just rotate to your back, don't try to flip. Once you can do that, then you get to start trying to pull the bar, right? Pulling the bar should just help get your back and shoulders to lift up. It shouldn't be trying to create a ton of momentum, right? It should just be helping get that momentum moving more and get more height out of it. Now, once you can do that, you basically just do that set, let go, and then tuck. I mean, really, that is the ideal way to learn swing cast because then you learn how to use the set to create rotation instead of just muscling it through. I highly, highly, highly recommend you practice the set before the skill. And you'll notice this a lot in a lot of the things I'll go over as I talk about practicing the set before the skill because learning the skill first, it's much harder to relearn a skill. And we could go into why that is because of predictive coding and the free energy principle and the way your brain works. But it's just a lot harder to relearn a skill than it is to learn it right the first time. It's worth taking the time to learn it right the first time, I promise. All right, be patient. Work on the set a lot, right? Work on that pike, arch, kick straight, round, pull down slightly, let go, tuck. That is basically swing cast. It's not, that sim it's not that easy, obviously. It's that simple, but not easy. Practice that set. Because if you can't even do that swing and let go of the bar with a little bit of straight body momentum backwards, you shouldn't be trying swing cast. You should be able to do the pike, arch, kick, hollow, let go, and just rotate with a straight body to your back. That is absolutely a prerequisite. If you can't do that, stop trying to do swing cast. Work on that, okay? then all you really have to do, all you should have to do is do exactly that, but after you let go, tuck. That really is all it should take. And you should be able to do a perfect swing cast. Or not perfect, but very good, right? So if you're trying to learn it and you don't have that first thing down, stop and go do that, seriously. But this is swing cast. I hope that helps. Let's watch it one more time so we can just appreciate the beauty of this and watch that really cool momentum shift. See if you can count all the times the momentum shifts from one side of the body to the other. You see it? Boom, boom, boom. Watch it one more time. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, it's so cool. It's so, so cool. All right. That's Swingcast. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. I think we're doing 360 dive rolls on the next one, which will be pretty fun. Uh, yeah, hope this helps.